What's up guys, Mr. Three Wood Bikes with a tool update. I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but it's been on my channel once or twice, but it's um, I've improved upon a tool. Now, this is something I've had for a couple years. I had a earlier version a long, for a long, long time, and then I built this one probably three summers back, but I've improved upon it, all the stuff on the top. Um, what this does, this is a great tool for any handyman, anyone that works with electronics, anyone that buys used electronics, if you buy scrap, if you want to test stuff that you don't know if it works, if you repair radios, any anything that you want to be able to plug into the wall and it not kill you if it short circuits, blow the breaker, or damage the product itself, this is the tool for you. And they're not that hard to make. Um, so, basically what happens is if it's shorted out... And I do have some errors on my diagram here, but if it's shorted out, instead of blowing up whatever you have in the other plug, right there, it just lights the, uh, in this case, 150 watt bulb. 200s to 300s are recommended, though. Then you can just rub out run anything. So, uh, but what I've done to demonstrate is, uh, it is plugged in right now, and as you will notice, and I'll show it once I unplug it, that's a polarized plug. I put a polarized plug on it, too used to have this plug on here, not my safest, not polarized, that's what I didn't like about it. I, do, I don't mind these, but for what this is, testing electronics, I wanted polarized. Um, and I got this off of a TV sit down at the curb today. Uh, I didn't take the TV, it was too big. It was The TV was obviously junked. I kind of would have liked the fly back out of it though. But anyway, so that's uh, going in there. And I have it in my amp meter right now, and the amp meter set to 250. And as you can see, I'm getting voltage out of it. Now, as you can see, the light bulb's not lighting it. That's because it's not drawing too much load like it's shorted. If I were to say unplug these, okay, and then we'll uh, unplug my new polarized plug. And as you can see, it is polarized. And plug in my homemade short circuit which I just had this cut too short laying around. I just adopted it. It's not polarized, by the way. And then I were to take a look at the light bulb, and we're going to plug it back in. This is shorted, same exact plug. Light lights up. Now that's incredibly handy, if you ask me. So, as you can see, it, both, it, it will function in something that is uh, still functioning and for something that is shorted. But here's what I add. On top of being now polarized and a couple little bit better wirings in there, um, and I had to solder one of the the 50 watt filament burned out in this bulb, so I soldered across the two because this is a multi filament bulb like the dimmable lamps. So I just had to put a solder bead across it. But I now have this top section, so I can if I flip the switch to on, grab a screwdriver. you know work. Oh, because it's unplugged. I was like, well, you know work. Okay, you plug it in. That helps. Then flip it to on. As you can see, the bulb lights up because that's a short. Now what this is going to allow me to do, and if I flip the switch off, well, you know work. What this is going to allow me to do is use alligator clips, which is extremely handy because a lot of the things I test don't have plugs on them. That's why they're being tested. I was, what was I working on that made me want to use this? It was, uh, or build this? It was. I think I was messing around with a light, some sort of light. And anyway, it made me want this. So at least now I have some control over this. This is always on, but you know it's a plug, so it's safer. The only thing I would like, because if you don't know if this is on or off without a glance, because I mean it's plugged in, it's on. What I would like is I have these uh, bulbs laying around in the general facility right here. They're neon, and I would like to somehow incorporate this into the case. They glow red, and they do run directly off of 110. So that would be kind of cool if I could get them in the power side, so that they always glow if this thing has any juice to it. But I don't really know how I want to mount them because it's in this little case and, you know, it wouldn't look real good screwed onto the side there and 
can't really be in sunk like I said sunk this but um yeah so basically positive side I had the large wire the hot one uh, goes and it, it I actually flipped the plug is correct and the placements are correct but the wires are flipped so the small plug is hot and it goes down into my two either the switch or the plug and then it will obviously do whatever it's doing there and the switch is right there and then it will come back there's the two uh, plugs so then it will come back and come right here they meet right here so this is the uh, the the mounts and this is the plug they come back into the light bulb and then go back up into your plug and this is me messing up on it earlier I was struggling with a hot versus uh, cold and different wire colors but uh yeah um let me give you it's I'll unplug it that's fourth not to get electrum coated that's all it is I mean it's really not that bad I have a socket uh, three wires total I have a short little wire that is actually part of this wire and uh, if you didn't know one side of these wires is ridge has ridges and the other side is smooth the smooth side is the hot side, I believe. Or I had it looked up. It, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And uh, I have the power going directly into the white lead of the bulb. The, the negative goes into the white lead of the bulb. And then the rest of it goes to the... I have the, um... The plug-in braided in with the other power wire which I just clamped together on that switch's lead right there instead of making another wire go to an alligator clip so they actually join here at this switch um, and then when I flip it on it allows the electrons to flow into this guy and then you have alligator clips and I did make them two different sizes for a reason so it's easily distinctable and then it will uh, be able to flow back into the bulb and go across that and um, back into the outlet which is uh, sort of nice um, I want to get the only thing I really want and I have one up in the air up there you can't see that power in this light um, I want to get one of those two prong polarized to a grounded adapter so I can check adapt or grounded things but because uh, the ground isn't too terribly important with this system but anyway it's just kind of neat. It's about 1.30 right now. I still haven't um, <coughs> even started to wind down, but whatever's. And uh, making sure that switch doesn't shock me. I haven't tried it yet, but uh, yeah, this is fun to play with because it shoots a nice little Parker will when YouTube's not about. But uh, yeah. It's a neat little, neat little mod I did with this tool. And if you have any questions about how to make one, pretty neat, just uh, let me know. Because it's, like I said, they're infinitely useful in the field, working on whatever. And you can make them, you don't have to put them in a case. I mean, you see how little space that takes up. My first one, all it was was it was, um, it was a project box, you know, about, probably about the size of this voltmeter, except it was deeper and then it had a small little uh, uh, light bulb uh, socket that I got off of an oven in the woods that it was it was real small and compact so it fit right in the top and I fit all the wires in there and that thing's like the biggest part of it's the light bulb so I mean you can make them pretty compact and decently durable so I would recommend making one